a welcoming, strong, resource-rich nation for your business to thrive in. Business-friendly and home to low taxes. The best banking system on the planet. World-renowned creative minds. State-of-the-art infrastructure that connects you to the world. Vibrant cities with easy access to the U.S. market. A highly educated and talented multicultural workforce. At the moment, uh, these are the ones that you know we have uh, worked with, to, to name a few. Um, as a professional body, we have memberships of a lot of professional uh, associations. Uh, all of our applications for, for the Canadian uh, PR and the investor program goes under our own banner and, uh, and you know, we are IRCCC certified as well. So um, quite simply it covers in the areas uh, from a professional perspective as well. Um, part of our service, the way we work is, uh, you know, we have multiple stages in the process and that's what enables us to make a successful application. Um, the first step for any application for us is a pre-screening, uh, where what we do is we work with the clients to identify whether they have the right jurisdiction, whether they have the right visa categories, uh, you know, whether we have picked the right entry route for them uh, based on their objectives, their life stages, and so on and so forth. Our team then works on the documentation, preparing the complete documentation for representation to the uh, to the appropriate authorities. Um, as I mentioned before, we are the representatives on recall, so there's no third party that kind of gets in the gets in the mix. Um, we respond to any any requests for information or additional evidence from the high commissions uh, or the CIC in this particular instance. And not only that, what we believe is a key to a success is um, helping our clients once they're in country. So, you know, we help them to set up companies, we help to identify buying businesses uh, for their marketing efforts, uh, making investments, uh, even kind of providing concierge services in terms of accommodation and, and schooling advice uh, for their children. So, so quite simply, we do believe that, you know, this is a full service proposition uh, that we would like to offer to our, our clients. And, and I think that's what drives a, a lot of success, uh, you know, from, from our perspective. Now, getting to uh, our program today, uh, we've, we've got a very interesting uh, lineup. So we're gonna start with a kind of a quick introduction about uh, why Canada is such a popular uh, location. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's not something I have to spend a lot of time on. There are almost a hundred of you on this call at the moment. So clearly, uh, you know, the, the popularity is, is self-evident. Uh, we're going to give some insight into what are the key industries um, sort of the six most profitable businesses in Canada as of date. Uh, so this was a research that we had actually just concluded around the COVID time period of the onset uh, in March of this year. So, so the data is still fairly relevant in that sense. Um, we're going to then get into the overview of the different migration routes. And, and I see a lot of questions coming in, which is quite encouraging. So uh, you know, feel free to drop in your questions in the uh, in the Q and A box that you see, and uh, you know we will be taking up uh, these questions at the end of the session. Uh, you can also drop in the messages on chat. Uh, I, I will be accessing the chat as we kind of go along as well. And um, we're going to spend some time understanding the different business migration routes. So whether it is the um, the provincial nominee pathways, uh, the intercompany transfer route, the owner operator route. So giving you a flavor about you know, what's out there and, and how can it be structured uh, from your perspective and, and you know, which one might be appropriate for you. Uh, we'd received a fair bit of questions at the time of registration and, and we've already starting to see uh, you know, a lot of questions coming in right now as well. So um, we'll try and answer as many questions as possible live during the event. Um, but uh, you know, if you're not able to answer that, we'll definitely be reaching out to each one of you over the weekend, and uh, you know, answering your queries and filling you in in terms of the questions that you have raised. So rest assured, your your queries will be answered. Uh, it will be our endeavor to do it live. But you know, if you're not able to, uh, you know, we'll definitely be reaching out. My team will be reaching out to you over the weekend, uh, so that you'll be able to to kind of you know fill in um, and get a fill on your answers. So that's that's the kind of a format uh, that you know we've we've kind of laid out today. 
Now, when we look at it in terms of, you know, what, uh, you know, makes Canada such a popular destination, uh, primarily it is, uh, if you look at the statistics, India is the third largest contributor uh, from, from a migration perspective, and we send the third highest number. Um, obviously, with the problems in China um, this year, it'll be interesting to see how the statistics uh, do stack up for the next year uh, on there. And quite surprisingly, it is United Kingdom that sends in the second highest number of migrants um, to Canada. So it's a very interesting corridor from UK to Canada that not a lot of people are actually aware of. But statistically, it's almost as big as the Indian market uh, from a Canadian perspective. And no surprises to see why it remains an attractive destination because you know it's got one of the most positive immigration policies. Um, it has a target of, of, of bringing in something like a million migrants over a five year period. Uh, it's the second easiest country in the world to start business with. Um, an individual can become eligible for a citizenship in three years time once they've entered the country. Um, people get attracted by the healthcare, the education uh, that is being offered. And uh, from a commercial perspective, it makes a lot more sense as well because uh, personal income tax starts from, from 15%, goes up to, to 33%, uh, whereas the Canadian controlled businesses, you know, which claim a small, uh, small business deduction, their net tax rate is about 9%, which is great uh, when you are looking at, uh, you know, starting up a new business or you are a small business, which, which most of the new entrants in Canada are, are looking at being. Now, Focusing on, on kind of, you know, the key drivers, uh, even in the current uh, COVID scenario, um, if you look at it, what we've done as a part of our research is, is to focus on the key provinces. And within those provinces, we've identified what could be the, the kind of, you know, the, the key business areas. Now, everybody talks about uh, Ontario and, uh, you know, the, the opportunities that one would get in Toronto and, and such. But it's very interesting to realize that, you know, the other provinces like uh, British Columbia, Manitoba, Yukon, um, they're actually pretty solid when it comes to offering in uh, investment opportunities. Uh, I mean, if you look at British Columbia, it's, a, it's an up and coming uh, destination in, in several respects. And, and it's a fine balance uh, between, uh, you know, not being very busy or, 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 or as, as, as populated as, say, Toronto. And not being completely empty either, so so it's it's a happy medium uh, in that sense with British Columbia, and you could start a variety of businesses, not only linked with uh, resources or or uh, anything to do with the natural uh, resources which are available in abundance uh, in Canada, but uh, you know food and accommodation, tourism, professional services, uh, they're all key areas, and what's surprising is when we look at provinces like Manitoba and Yukon. The kind of industries that they are promoting out there, that's a huge opportunity. And especially when we talk about renewable energy and so on and so forth, uh, it's, it's, it's a great option uh, to, to start a similar kind of a business in Canada. Now, when we look at the key um, kind of profitable businesses uh, for Canada, the top of the list, uh, not surprisingly, is a real estate business which uh, includes buying, renting uh, of uh, residential space, commercial space, um, land even, and really high margins, 46.5% margin in the real estate business, which is, uh, you know, which is really great. Transportation and storage is the second uh, kind of uh, popular business in Canada that one could look at running, quite simply because, you know, it's a huge landmass. Uh, there are good developed means of transport and there's obviously a lot of a lot of demand for for transportation and storage across the country um, waste management and recycling 86 percent of the businesses in this domain have reported a profit which is a great uh, achievement e-commerce not surprisingly um, canada is is the ninth largest e-commerce market globally which is fantastic and and you know given the current environment that we're in this is only an opportunity that's going to see a lot more growth in, in, in at least over the next year or a couple of years. Our professional financial services are, are popular across all provinces. In fact, financial services is the only kind of job occupation 
which is on the priority list, which has a quicker processing compared to all the other functional areas. So in addition to IT, uh, financial services is, is something that, that you know, really, really is, is a big driver in, in Canada. Fitness and recreation sports centers, uh, again, a very strong uh, business idea for, from a Canadian perspective, given the love for the outdoors and uh, you know, the, the emphasis on clean and better living. Uh, the fitness and recreation industry is, is geared towards a lot of innovation. Uh, people are willing to try a lot of things. Uh, we've had somebody who entered in Canada last year. Uh, they started off a business uh, in Canada and they were based in British Columbia. Uh, just within a span of 15 months, they've gone from a single store to a four store operation. And, and that's just amazing because, you know, they were saying that they were based in, in Delhi for, for almost, uh, they were doing business in Delhi for almost 15 years and, and they'd managed two stores in, in Delhi. So clearly, uh, you know, the environment and uh, the whole ecosystem in Canada is a lot more friendlier, uh, you know, and, and if you have the drive, if you have the zeal, uh, you could scale up businesses very quickly in, in Canada. So, so these are kind of the six most profitable businesses that we've identified basis of our research. Um, there is more which can be looked at. There could be more specific subcategories that could be looked at as well. Uh, but this is generally a good place to start if you were thinking about what kind of business should I be looking at doing in Canada? And, and maybe one of these six can be, can be something that you can, um, you can use at. Um, yes, yes, uh, we would be making a copy of the presentation available. Uh, there will also be this recording that will go up on our YouTube channel. So, so yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, if you can't, uh, you know, you, you don't have to, to worry about taking notes at this point. Um, right. Coming into the, to the uh, business migration options for Canada, the, the most popular route is the express entry program. And, and this is a points-based uh, system. And I'm, and I'm sure that you know, a lot of you are familiar with this. Um, generally, it is geared towards working for professionals who score the higher number of points uh, under this program. One of the key challenges that we find, particularly from uh, people who want to apply and who come from a business community, is, uh, is that uh, if you have a higher score, on the IELTS or the English language test, then you have a, a better advantage on the express entry. And, um, and, 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 and this is where the challenge comes in, especially from people who, for whom English is not a first language. Um, I, I see a lot of comments from our delegates in, in East Africa, uh, you know, saying that you know, they're all struggling with the, the IELTS scores and, and that's a universal uh, refrain that we hear. Also, what happens on the express entry program is that the, the comprehensive ranking score, the cutoff which allows you to enter into Canada, has been going up. And um, last year, it was in the region of about 420, 425. So if you scored that much on the CRS, you had a good shot at getting the PR. Now it's at about 470, 480, which makes it a lot more challenging for people to, to meet up. So the competition is kind of heating up in that sense. And Again, if you go in as a job seeker, there's a lot of competition for jobs in Canada because there are kind of key pockets where you will find employment opportunities. And, uh, and, and that's uh, essentially where, uh, you know, everybody's going to be focused on. So obviously there's a higher amount of competition. Also Canadian employers do have a preference, uh, you know, for selecting candidates who've got some kind of uh, you know, Canadian experience, either in terms of education or some kind of work experience in Canada, which puts newer migrants at a disadvantage, at least for the first six to 12 months, uh, you know, for, for most instances. So what that leaves us with, and, and this is where we're focusing on, is the provincial programs for the entrepreneurs and investors, which is what we're going to focus on. Um, here, an applicant who, who intends to run a business or is an entrepreneur gets a support from the provinces, whether it is British Columbia, whether it is Ontario, whether it is Yukon, Manitoba, uh, to, to enter into the province and to set up a business. And one of the key requirements is obviously that the applicant um, you know, requires to stay in the province and make that into their primary home 
which can be a challenge if you're going to pick a smaller province because you may not you may have friends or family who are all based in, in, in either Toronto or they're based in Vancouver, and you may not want to stay in, in Yukon or Manitoba or your family may not prefer to. Um, so, so, so that's one of the challenges um, under the program. Um, the other kind of category that we look at is the owner operator program, um, which is uh, allows applicants to either buy an established business or launch a new business in Canada. And we're going to go through a bit more detail about this, uh, you know, in, 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 the, in the slides up ahead. Um, so the concept with the owner operator is that you make an investment in the business and you are then making an application for a work visa as a management employee of that particular business. So essentially your own business is sponsoring you uh, on the work visa. As some of the corporates that we work with choose the intra-company transfer option, which basically is, as the word suggests, uh, you know, if there's a senior employee of a company who possesses a specialist skill, whether it is into management or whether it's into any of the technical areas, then they're able to make an application to, to be transferred to Canada. Um, the requirement being that, you know, there already is a branch or an affiliate, uh, which is set up in, in Canada and, and the said branch or the subsidiary is offering a job to that particular person. So, so again, it's, it's interesting to have a look at this uh, as we kind of dwell on. Um, when we look at the provincial program from the investors and the entrepreneurs perspective, the provinces, they operate their own point system. So there is a federal point system, which is on the express entry side. But then when we look at the entrepreneurial pathway as well, the provinces have their own kind of uh, point system. The key part in the point system and to improve your probability of success in there, we've identified kind of the optimum amounts for investments and for net worths. So for instance, um, you know, if you wanted to, to be based in Toronto and you wanted to apply in the Ontario's uh, you know, uh, investor uh, program, then you know the investment ticket size that we're looking at is is between six to eight crores in Indian rupee terms, and the individual should have a net worth of between ten to twelve crores. And the net worth is basically all your assets, less your liabilities, and and uh, your your net worth is computed for both the husband and the wife. So so it's 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 that you could not take into account the net worth that you know your family might have, or you might be inheriting it at some future date that doesn't count. It's, it's what's in your name today is what you could look at claiming. And um, Toronto also looks for experienced business people. So if you have a business experience of at least four to five years and you're able to demonstrate that this is the amount of investment you're prepared to make, then your application has a higher probability of success. So understand that because it's a points system and you get points for the amount of investment you're going to make, if you go with the most nominal amount, which is 200,000 or 250,000 Canadian dollars, it only works out to about one CR in rupee terms. Now, if you were going to a busy province like Toronto, which already gets tons of applications from around the world, the points that you will score will be lesser compared to the other people. What that generally then means is your application is stuck and, and you don't see any progress. So, so you know, that's the reason why it's, it's good to have an idea about what's an optimum number to, to be able to, to be successful uh, for an application. And second up is British Columbia. So if you wanted to look at living in Vancouver, typically, uh, you know, you need to be prepared to invest three to five crores, depending on your business proposition, depending on what is it that you wanted to work with. And you need to be able to demonstrate a net worth of at least four to six crores. And at the third level, you have provinces like Yukon and Manitoba, where the investment size is typically around one to two crores and, and the net worth is, is around three to four crores. Now, what this essentially demonstrates is that, you know, you have a three tier system. If you want to be in a tier one province, you're going to have to invest more. You're going to have to show a higher net worth. If you're going to pick a, a, a tier three province, uh, for argument's sake, and uh, then the investment threshold is, is slightly lower and, and also the net worth requirement is lower. So in that sense, uh, you know, depending on matching you know, 
what works for you and, and where the net worth comes in. Uh, you know, we can take a call to say that what's the best place for you to be to be making your investments in. 